if you don't want to work anymore, then I think this episode will be of interest to you. There's a lot of people out there who don't enjoy their jobs or they don't enjoy working. They don't enjoy having to do something as a means to, to an end, like doing something that they don't necessarily want to be doing in order to get the money or the resources, whatever it might be, to then go do the things they actually want to do. And I've been thinking to myself, I was taking a good, good walk with the dogs this morning and just thinking loads about the idea of working and the idea of a job and realizing that that's ultimately all it is, is an idea. It's a thought form. It's it's a concept. Working is a concept that has been so widely spread across so much of the world, which we become indoctrinated with, you know, with this concept through our education systems, because that's, that's just how we're conditioned to think about receiving well, firstly, that, that we need money to be able to exist within this world, that you couldn't receive the resources that you need, the, the shelter, the food, the, you know, whatever else it is, the fuel to, to, to power your car, the transportation, that the opportunities for transportation can be there in the moments when you need them, that we have to rely on this resource called money, which was, hasn't always existed, which was, created at some point, um, I don't know how, how long ago in the past when they started using coins or different things to, you know, to trade with, which I guess, which was created at, at some point when people lost faith in the natural, spontaneous abundance of life and consciousness and our ability to create from source you know, here and now and in this moment that we need to have something that we can like hold on to and save for the future because we can't create here and now. And and then come back to my point, this idea about working and having a job. Back in the, I can't remember when it was, like our, our current education system has been constructed from, from, from back in the, I think it was like the 1940s when I think it was something to do with uh, Rockefeller or you know big corporations and the war wanting more people to to man the factories and and just to to be able to repetitively do a task because that's what they needed them to do. It was good for for business, um, good for these factories, good for production, and they just wanted to train people to do the same thing. Over, over again in these production factory lines. And that's why like in, I mean, education and schools are changing now, but, but for so many years, it's remained the same where everyone like sits in rows and you don't speak unless you're spoken to or you're asked a question. And it's very much like the conditions of factory working, you know, for example, apart from there's not loads of like machinery and things, you know, going on, but Essentially, it's all the same. And, and Rockefeller even said himself, we don't want thinkers, we want workers. There was some, 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 some quote of his about, you know, say their implementation, implementation to the, 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 the education system that, that, that we have. And with that then becoming so, the, like the norm, the culture for education and, and every new being that grows up then becomes conditioned with this philosophy, with this belief system, that that is how life is to be lived. That at some point, you're going to have to work for money. You have to make money. And often that's in the form of a job. Now there's other people with di different perceptions of how you can create income. 
if you ever read the book Rich Dad Poor Dad, for example, it's a great example of how it depicts that there's different ways of of creating or allowing income to, you know, money to come into your life. One is to exchange your time for money. You have like an hourly wage or like a, a salary where based on the amount of time you put in something, you're getting a getting paid salary for every like day, week, month that you're working. Um, that's like the, the employee. Then you've got like the self-employed, which is where I guess you can still sell you could still sell your time for money as, as someone who's self-employed, but I guess you have a lot bit more like sort of freedom and control over it. But but I guess moving past that, it's results for money. So instead of charging like, all right, I'm gonna charge 15 pound an hour or 20 pound an hour or 30 pound an hour for the work that I do. It's like, right, I'm gonna achieve this result. I'm gonna, I'm gonna complete this objective for you. I'm gonna build your website. I'm gonna, you know, landscape your garden. I'm going to sell you a product, you know, and it is this, price and regardless of how long that takes or how much effort it takes you're exchanging that result for a particular price another way to earn income is through business running a business and leveraging systems whether that's other people's time and effort and energy or automated systems ai and robotics computers whatever it might be where you're not really involved yourself, you just make sure it's running and then it comes in. And lastly is investing, where you're just making money work and then and then money makes you more money, basically. And in school, we don't get taught about, you know, the other ways to make money. We just get taught the time for money, way to make money, how to get a job. That's all we're conditioned to believe. And we have to, if we're not excited about that, if that's not fulfilling or giving us enough freedom or freedom freedom or not allowing us to create the level of wealth and abundance that we that we desire to be able to do what we want to do and have the experience we want to have and you know buy the things we want to buy and eat the kind of foods we want to eat or have like say just generally live the experience we want to have, you know live then we need to expand our mind to other ways other ideas about how wealth abundance and specifically money in this case can be can be created and received into our lives and moving past that to one step even further because i guess this channel is a lot about manifestation and consciousness and the realization that thoughts create things, that there is power behind our thoughts and our, and our intentional focus and putting our, our mental focus and energy into something to co-create with source things in this physical material world. That it's these ideas and the beliefs that we hold on to that shape the experience that we have. So, what if we were to choose to accept the idea that money just finds us? Money comes to me whenever I need it. That we don't, you don't need to work for money. It literally just turns up in your life. For some people that might be hard to believe. And there's a difference between just saying something, like me saying it now, and me really believing it, like with my being. And I, that's something I want to believe, that money just shows up in my life. I don't need to think about money. I don't need to worry about money. I don't need to work. Somehow it just shows up. And maybe that happens because subconsciously I'm doing things out in the world that are you know, of value to other people and they recognize that and then they're like, oh, we just want to give Elliot money because he's you know, out of value to my life. But I don't understand that that's how they're thinking or that I've specifically done something that's going to you know, receive, you know, make me receive money. And to me, I'm just going about my life, doing things that make me happy and enjoying myself and playing and having a good time. But there's a switch side to that where maybe that's like I say, our value to other people and they're like, oh, we just want to give them money. And because we have 
entangled consciousnesses, every single one of us, they're aware that I'm in a space of being willing to receive money and therefore their consciousness is receiving that and they're thinking, oh, we should give Elliot some money, right? Because it's all interconnected, it's all entangled. And, and like I say, you know, it's one thing me saying it now, but a different thing me really believing it in all my body. Because what happens is I, over the last sort of year or a couple of years, I've been changing the way I've been thinking about money. And to start with, the term work was always really kind of a dirty word to me. I thought that you just, like there was just association in my mind, like you ha work is not enjoyable. You just have to work in order to make money. And often you're doing things you don't really want to be doing um, in, order, in order to make that money. And over the last couple of years, I've been trying to, to create a new association with creating income. So instead of, instead of thinking that I have to work for money, I think about it in terms of creating income. And so that frees me up you know, to, to thinking in, in, in the sense of, oh, I've got to do things I don't want to do to make money, to I can do things that are of value to pe other people that I also really enjoy, which they want to pay me for. Like dog sitting. I get to stay in beautiful homes. Like, look at this place. It's, like, it's gorgeous. Um, and look after, look after their dogs and they pay me every day for doing it. Like, and I just hang out at the house, I walk the dogs, um, I cook nice food, I play music, I make videos, and I do things I do things I enjoy. Hang out with my girlfriend. Like, this doesn't, this isn't work. Like, the old view of work that I used to have. This is just creating, this is creating income in a wonderful way. And I'm sure there's loads of other ways that I could create income in wonderful ways by doing things that I enjoy that could involve music, that could involve sport, could involve drawing, like, who knows, could involve talking, like you say, making YouTube videos and maybe this channel gets monetized and then, you know, making money from that and it's not working, I'm just doing stuff I enjoy and it comes in. And so that's a development of my, my consciousness, I suppose, of my my belief system on how money can be made from working, doing something you don't enjoy to make money to doing things you do enjoy to make money. Sounds great. A step up, like say, you know, past that is thinking like, I just, money just comes to me. I don't even need to talk about money. I don't need to discuss money. I don't need to quote people prices for money. I just can completely let go of the idea of feeling like there's any level of scarcity in my life and just realize I'm always taken care of. The world is always going to support me. Life is always going to support me. People are always going to pay me phenomenal amounts of money, whether I, you know, quote them an amount or not, the work that I do. Um, and it's just going to flow into my life and I can just be and live and just have fun and play and just money's always going to flow in. And that's a whole other belief system, right? That's a whole nother level step up where I'm just not even thinking about it anymore because at the moment I'm still like people say how much you know how much do you charge for dog sitting and I'm like oh I don't know 60 pound a night 80 pound a night 120 pound a night depends on how many dogs and, and whatnot um, but to me thinking about money and giving prices is still <sighs> still me living in some space uh, you know to some to some level of scarcity that I feel like I, I oftentimes like I feel like I want, I want to say higher amounts because I want more money because I feel like I don't have enough or I want to do more things rather than and, and to that extent I'm also limiting myself like what if people want to pay me more you know thousands of pounds a night who knows like and I'm just limiting myself because because I'm quoting specific amounts. And if I'm able to just live in a space internally, subconsciously and, and, and fully embody that I'm super wealthy, that, that 
that thousands and thousands of pounds flow into my life, into my bank account every single month. It could be every single week. And I didn't even have to think about it. And I'm not even working. I'm just playing and doing things I enjoy. And everything's just working out for me. And I can do everything I want to do. I can afford everything. Everything I want, I can afford it. Um, that's a whole different level of, of thinking and believing that I need to learn how to accept within myself. And, and the reason I was thinking about this is because like there's always that time that comes around where I say, maybe I, maybe I haven't done anything for a little while and I'm spending my money and then because I'm still conditioned to an extent of thinking that I need to create my own money. I need to ask the world for money rather than the world just offering me money and always keeping my bank account topped up. That when it starts going down because I haven't been quoting jobs or like I say, you know, booking in dog sitting or whatever it might be. Then my body kind of starts to go into a bit of like a panic mode. And then there's a point where I can continue to operate under the old belief system, the old conditioning, which is that I need to make money happen basically by quoting to do some work, you know, not work, quoting to do something for somebody, right? Something fun, dog sitting, building something, playing some music, whatever it might be. <clears throat> Asking for, for an amount, them saying yes, and you know, that's, that's how it, that's how that money comes in versus letting go of that idea saying right from this point onwards I'm not going to ask anybody for money I'm just going to allow people to give me money and again like I say I can say that but until I fully accept it internally, my 3D reality isn't going to depict that to me. It's not going to start giving me money because I'm probably still going to be living in a space that's a bit of like uncertainty and fear and thinking like, oh, I hope people just give me money without me having to ask for it. Until I really fully believe that they're going to fully embody like a full trust, like a full knowing that it's coming in, in which point it starts coming in, because that's how it works. That's how life works. When you accept an idea or something as truth, that's how your reality is displayed to you. And so it makes me think that maybe there's a point where like our, our faith is tested, right? In, in, like our new concepts, new ideas that we want to hold, like hold and, and experience become tested. Where maybe my bank account starts going down and I have no money and I can't afford, you know, somewhere to live or to feed myself or do anything I want to do. And I just have to hold fast. Like I don't really have to do anything. I just have to not give in to the old belief system and, and, and say, I just have to not say, okay, I'm going to continue operating th through these, the concepts that I have to ask for money in the world. Um, I have to create my money and, and, con and continue to hold on to the belief system that people are just going to give me money. Money is just going to turn up in my life. Huge amounts of money are going to turn up in my life. And I can just play and have fun and be me and just be happy. And that's scary. It's scary because, you know, part of me thinks like, oh my God, like how long am I going to have to like persevere to push through? How long am I going to have to not eat? You know, be able to feed myself. Like if I can't afford to rent somewhere, I'm going to be like on the streets outside, literally like a homeless person, just not begging because I'm sitting there directing my energy and my focus into how the world just gives me money. 
and then I'm just naturally super abundant and wealthy and money flows into my life from, from all places and I don't even have to think about it or worry about it. I'm just, it just happens. Because maybe that's what it takes. Like we have, maybe we have to, our system has to be shocked a bit, for example, because sitting, like I say, you know, sitting outside on the street when it might be a bit cold and wet and I'm, and I'm hungry and I'm thirsty, like imagine how much mental focus and the energy that is being used to, to redirect and hold on to this, this new idea, this concept of money just flowing into my life. And that's the energy that's required in order to make that shift and, inc and create that experience from source. Because we know that. We know that it is our, it is our focus, it is our attention on specific things and specific ideas that manifest reality, that shape this experience that we have. And there's some things which, you know, are way easier to accept than others. And some things that feel like they just happen. Like my girlfriend, for example, she was on her way to work today and she was thinking to herself like, oh, I really want to hear this particular song. And then she walks into the petrol station and that exact song right after she was, she had this thought is, is playing there in the petrol station. And that's, that's not coincidence. That's creation. That's her living in a state of just feeling like it's, it's very possible. Like, not that she's going through these thinking in her mind, like, you know, this process, but just in her body, just like living the experience of hearing this song. And she's like, oh, like playing it in her mind. And then all of a sudden, like it's playing on the radio. And I've had that experience loads of times in random places where they're playing songs, which you would not expect for them to be playing in those places. I'm like, this is so weird. Like, how does this happen? Or like a specific pop person pops up, you know, or calls you that you were thinking about and all these different, different things. But yeah, as long as we continue, and that's, I guess, like the, the, the point of this, this conversation is, and what I'm getting at is like, if we continue to entertain an old idea, an old belief system, an old paradigm, which isn't serving us anymore or making us happy, that we want to let go of and replace with something new, we may have to sort of face the fear a little bit to push through and get to the other side, to allow the new paradigm to become sort of ingrained into us. Because as long as, if we get to that point where, especially when it comes to, for example, making money, where if we have to like withstand and just be like a, a stubborn child, for example, that's like, no, I'm just not gonna entertain this bullshit anymore. Like, I don't like it. That's not how I wanna live. It's not the experience that I wanna shape around me. I say no. Are we willing to go the distance? Are we willing to be stubborn enough to refuse to settle for less than we know we desire and that we're worth? Because your everything you desire is valid. You know, you're you're worthy of everything that you want. The whether that's money, whether it's success, fame, love, great health adventure, security, all of it. It's, it's your birthright. It is, it is yours. Like as, as an extension of consciousness, as an extension of source, as the extension of God, it's, you're entitled to, to all of it and anything that you want. But we have to be brave sometimes, I suppose, to allow ourselves to receive it because, you know, as long as we're here, there's always this kind of idea that lingers in the back of the mind, which is, what if we're not the creator? What if thoughts don't shape reality? What if I'm wrong and I die? <laughs> Um, and that's difficult to get past. It's tricky. 
but when we can really just live in faith and trust in the universe, in source, in God, in ourselves, in the power of our own, you know, creative thought energy, essentially. And we stop freaking out. We stop reacting to the circumstances and just say, no, I refuse to accept that as my reality anymore. I choose to believe this. This is my new belief system. And I'm just going to hold out until it happens. Yeah. Let me know let me know what you think about this. Because Yeah, that's absolutely where I'm at. Like I Yeah, my thinking is that that's the only way to transcend our current current level of like, you know, awareness and experiences to just stop accepting a lesser version of reality. You know, as the result and as the result of these lesser paradigms or belief systems that we hold on to and, and yeah, we just gotta really push through and let go and just stop stop playing them. Stop reacting to them. And just know that this is all like I say, it's the the great dream, the great illusion the great Maya, where as long as we can, you know, hold on, you know, hold on tight enough and just be like, ah, it's a bit scary, but I know it's not real to an extent. It's just the projection of my consciousness, the projection of my paradigms, the projection of my belief systems. Like, ah, oh, it's, it's, it's not true. I'm not going to die. I'm not, you're going to starve. I'm not poor, I'm, you know, it's an illusion, all of that stuff. I am abundant. I'm eternal. I'm wealthy. I am healthy. And we just, we don't react to it. Just like if, you know, if someone's trying to make you laugh, I mean, you may see these videos like online. Where they're like, I don't know, maybe someone's like pulling funny faces, and be like, uh, uh, telling jokes and this and that, and you just have to try not to laugh. You'd be like, it's gonna go away eventually. Like eventually, if you stop reacting to the person, or if they're trying to bug you or annoy you or whatever it is, you just stop reacting to them. It's like bullies, bullies love the reactions from people. So if you just don't react, and you just ignore, eventually it goes away. That, that individual stops or whatever it is because it just gets bored. And that's kind of what like, the way I see that life or the universe plays with us and how we play with it. Is it as long as yet yeah, we stop engaging with it in some capacity, it's just gonna be like, oh, well, this is boring anymore. I'm not getting any kind of response. So let's then mix it up. But as long as it's getting our attention, then it continues to give us more of that because life wants our attention. Just like if you're playing with somebody or you're with your friend or you're with your partner, like we want their attention. We want to be noticed. Life wants to be noticed by us. And so if we stop noticing and giving attention to the things that we don't like, the paradigms, the situations that we don't like, it's going to give up and then give us what our attention is on. It's gonna give me the, the, the experience of money just flowing into my life from random places. Me never having to work, do anything I don't wanna do, just get to play and have fun every day, play, play tennis, play golf, play guitar, walk dogs, cook and eat beautiful food, travel the world, make videos on, on YouTube, all the stuff I love to do, and I'm just fully taken care of. I live in beautiful homes. 
and just life is just perfect. That's what my attention, that's how I'm keeping my attention. So let me know, put it in the comments. Have you ever tried something like this? Are you trying something now? Do you think I'm crazy? Do you think this makes sense? Um, and as always, if you have questions, you want to reach out and have a chat about any of this kind of stuff, my email is below in the, you know, my description. And so is my Instagram. Um, you can contact me on, on either of those, I suppose. Nice. All right, sweet. See you later.